Uh, thanks for joining me today. My name is Timothy Byers. I am the president and uh, chief education officer of Radical Health. And today we're going to explore cannabis use and uh, cardiovascular health. So this presentation is for educational purposes only and the information presented is not intended to be a substitute for medical advice. Uh, this is usually a talk I give over the course of an hour. So we're gonna move pretty quickly today. Uh, and given our time constraints, I won't be able to take any questions. So please visit me in the Radical Health virtual booth if you have any questions or comments about this presentation. You can view a previous version of this presentation in its original entirety. Uh, at our Radical Health YouTube channel, and of course, that's there for free. Uh, in August of 2020, the American Heart Association released a comprehensive statement about cannabis and cardiovascular health, and, and they declared this. They said, quote, cannabis may have therapeutic benefits, uh, but few are cardiovascular in nature. Conversely, many of the concerning health implications of cannabis include cardiovascular disease, although they may be mediated by mechanisms of delivery, end quote. The resulting internet headlines were both uh, breathless and alarming. Uh, weed is not good for your heart, studies say. Uh, millions of cannabis smokers at risk of deadly heart attack and stroke, docs warn. American Heart Association warns marijuana is a substantial health risk. And of course, my favorite, uh, could marijuana break your heart? Uh, the literature produced in the past 30 years about cannabis and cardiovascular disease can be somewhat confusing. So let's start with this. We know that combusting cannabis flour can have multiple negative effects that can lead to cardiovascular stress and potentially more serious issues in persons with existing cardiovascular problems. And these issues include tachycardia, uh, myocardial, increased myocardial oxygen demand and decreased myocardial oxygen supply, increased carboxyhemoglobin levels and increased endothelial dysfunction. If you don't know what any of these things are, go over to our full talk uh, in, at our YouTube channel and, you, and, and I'll discuss them in the original talk. These risks are mostly related to smoking any organic combustible material, including cannabis. Now consumers can mitigate these risks by using state certified vaping products or other routes of administration. Is combusting cannabis flour comparable to combusting tobacco? No. Absolutely not. But again, combusting any organic material does present some risk. So let's review some of the medical literature and explore whether the use of cannabis and cannabinoids specifically uh, potentiate adverse cardiovascular effects. Uh, a simple internet search uh, using the terms cannabis and heart attack uh, will likely uh, return information from a study completed in the year 2000 in which researchers determined that the risk of a heart attack is 4.8 times higher in the first hour after smoking cannabis. Now this study is ubiquitous on the internet. It, I've seen it on websites like Healthline, it's on the American Heart Association's website, the American Co College of Cardiology, BBC News, it's on Harvard Medical School's website, the CDC's website, it was on CNN. Uh, it was referenced in the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine's comprehensive report of 2017 on cannabis. Uh, it's been on ABC News, Market Watch, and I've seen it quoted in multiple published medical papers. Again, 4.8 times the risk of a heart attack during the first hour after smoking cannabis. That's an alarming statistic. The details of this study, however, are uh, somewhat, uh, they present somewhat uh, of a less salacious conclusion. So this study was led by Murray Middleman, who was uh, at Harvard Medical Center. It included uh, 3,882 patients. They were interviewed between uh, August 1989 and September 1996. All of them had heart, had heart attacks. And of these roughly 3,800 patients, 124 of them reported smoking cannabis within one year of their heart attack. 37 reported smoking cannabis within 24 hours, and nine patients reported smoking cannabis within one hour of their heart attack. Now, three of these nine patients also reported cocaine use and sexual intercourse within one hour of the attack. So consequently, the conclusions of this study are based on six patients. And even if we assume that Dr. Middleman's conclusions are correct, smoking cannabis would still account for a smaller proportion of heart attacks than air pollution. 
Now, in response to the Middleman study, uh, the Lynn Smith Center, this was the predecessor to the Drug Policy Alliance, uh, they published an article called Junk Science Makes Headlines, Questionable Study Links Marijuana Smoking and Heart Attacks. They published this in June of 2001, and they stated the following. They said that uh, an analysis of the research methods used reveals glaring flaws. The sample size is statistically insignificant. No causal relationship has been established. And the study itself has never been replicated. Based on this minuscule self-selected sample, Dr. Middleman concludes that the risk of a heart attack is 4.8 times higher one, uh, one hour after smoking marijuana. Assuming that Dr. Middleman's conclusions are correct, the fact that heart attack risk for an otherwise 50-year-old man is about 10 in 1 million highlights the sensationalism of the wise uh, spread publicity the study is receiving. Another statistic that appears consistently in internet articles and in the medical literature is that in patients with chronic stable angina, smoking a single cannabis cigarette decreased exercise time to angina by 50%. So this is a statistic that's cited uh, from a single study completed in 1977. It included 10 male patients who were asked to smoke 18 milligrams of THC. It's a very small sample size a moderately high dose of THC. It was probably pretty low potency in 1977, uh, but the information is presented in the medical literature as putative. Now, the CARDIA study, this is a coronary artery risk development in young adult study. This is a long-term study of cardiovascular disease uh, beginning in young adulthood. Um, the, this is a well-respected study that included uh, 5,113 adults. They were aged 18 to 30 years at the beginning of the study. This was uh, between 1985 and 1986. Uh, researchers followed these participants for nearly 30 years, and they estimated cumulative lifetime exposure to cannabis with assessments that they collected at examinations uh, roughly every two to five years. And the study intended to examine the incidence of cardiovascular disease in this patient base. So these researchers concluded that Compared with no cannabis use, cumulative lifetime and recent cannabis use showed no association with cardiovascular disease, stroke, heart attack, coronary heart disease, or cardiovascular disease mortality. Cannabis use was not associated with cardiovascular disease when stratified by age, gender, race, or family history. Now, this was a different team of investigators at Harvard Medical School. They performed a perspective study to assess the use of cannabis among patients with existing heart disease and whether cannabis use is associated with an increased risk of death. Uh, this study included nearly 4,000 heart attack survivors who were studied over an 18 year period. Uh, here are their conclusions. Quote, in this perspective, multi-center cohort study of myocardial infarction, survivor, survivors followed prospectively for up to 18 years. There was no conclusive evidence of an association between smoking marijuana and mortality. Uh, Madeline Meyer and her colleagues at Duke and Arizona State Universities, they published a longitudinal comparison of persistent cannabis users uh, with persistent tobacco users. And uh, her team used data from about 1,000 individuals born in Dunedin, New Zealand. This was between 1972 and 1973, and these patients were followed for decades. Uh, Meyer and her team wanted to, to test how cannabis use between the ages of 18 and 38 uh, was associated with physical health. Uh, at age 38, even after controlling for tobacco use, childhood health, and, and childhood socioeconomic status. Now, they found that tobacco use was associated with worse lung function and worse metabolic health uh, and uh, systemic inflammation at age 38 years. So no, no surprises there. Regarding cannabis, uh, they stated that cannabis use for up to 20 years is associated with periodontal disease, but is not associated with any other physical health problems in early midlife. Now, of course, there are studies that seem to suggest an association uh, with cardiovascular risk and cannabis use, but they do tend to be isolated case reports or larger studies that include confounding factors, uh, such as tobacco or illicit drug use. So, for example, uh, this is a study published in 2013. Uh, it suggested an association between, quote, a cannabis lifestyle that includes tobacco, end quote, uh, and ischemic stroke. Uh, of course, demonstrating an association is not the same as proving causality. Uh, and in this study, nearly every patient with a positive cannabis screen also tested positive for tobacco use. So these researchers noted that, quote, further research is required to clarify whether there is an association between cannabis uh, and stroke independent of tobacco, end quote. 
Uh, this is a case report uh, published in 2014. Uh, this described a healthy 21-year-old man. Uh, he, was, he reported to the emergency department in Wales uh, with a sharp pain in his chest that began while he was playing soccer and it lasted for 30 minutes. He had a heart attack. Uh, he, was a, a, he was a regular cannabis user and a regular tobacco smoker. Uh, he also reported some cocaine use, but he stated that that use was not recent. Uh, and for some reason, the doctors identified his cannabis use as the most significant precipitant of his attack. And here's part of the reason why they came to this conclusion. They said, quote, though cannabis is not commonly regarded as a risk factor for this diagnosis, there is evidence that cannabis seems to be a rare trigger for myocardial infarction, with the risk being increased by a factor of 4.8 in the first hour after smoking it. So apparently uh, these doctors had read Middleman's study as well. Uh, the National Institute on Drug Abuse performed a seminal review. This was co-authored by their director, Nora Valkow. Uh, it was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2014. Uh, in this review, NIDA summarized the existing medical research and they identified their overall confidence in the evidence of adverse effects of cannabis. Now, certainly uh, we can take issue with these estimations of confidence. That's a different talk for a different day. Uh, it's notable, however, what's not listed here, and that's cardiovascular risk. So this really underscores the fact that there's a great deal of ambiguity about the data and the association between cannabis and cardiovascular risk. And I assure you, it is not for lack of looking. Uh, what about risks associated with other routes of administration? Uh, in one case study published in the Canadian Journal of Cardiology, a 70-year-old man with a history of heart disease wanted to reduce his uh, osteoarthritic pain and improve his sleep. He consumed a cannabis edible that contains 90 milligrams of THC, that's nine zero. Uh, and within 30 minutes, he was experiencing hallucinations and severe chest pain. He went to the hospital, the doctors determined that he had had a heart attack and they stated that they believed that the large dose of THC put a sudden and uh, unexpected strain on his heart and it triggered the attack. Now it's well established that ingesting cannabis can produce acute anxiety, it can produce panic attacks and it can produce tachycardia. All of these symptoms constrain the heart muscle, especially in patients who have existing cardiovascular disease. So it's, it's especially important for senior patients and for patients with existing cardiovascular disease to work with a healthcare professional uh, to ensure that they're using an appropriate cannabinoid profile, the best route, and the appropriate dose. Uh, I do want to mention that there have been at least four published case reports of myocarditis associated with cannabis use. And in one case, the condition led to heart failure and the subsequent death of an 11-month-old child who had ingested cannabis edibles. So myocarditis refers to inflammation of the heart muscle. It's typically caused by the immune system, and it's typically in response to some trigger, something like a viral infection or a chemical toxin. So in all of these reports, it's not clear whether cannabis itself was the cause of myocarditis or if there were contaminants in the products that contributed to the condition, things like pesticides or mold or heavy metals, or whether the patient had some existing uh, and unidentified condition that, that was exacerbated by these um, large doses of cannabis. Recently, uh, researchers uh, concluded a comprehensive systematic review of the literature published between 1975 and September 2017. And these were their conclusions. They said, quote, evidence examining the effect of marijuana on diabetes, dyslipidemia, acute myocardial infarction, stroke, cardiovascular and awe cause mortality was insufficient, end quote. Now, clearly there's more work to do here. Insufficient data does not mean absence of risk. Cannabis is not entirely benign. THC can produce adverse effects. Uh, specifically when combusting or ingesting large doses, and especially in patients with cardiovascular conditions. And while there do exist small studies and individual case reports uh, that suggest that cannabis can trigger heart attacks in people with existing cardiovascular disease, that risk remains low, and, and those risks really can be mitigated if consumers use routes other than inhalation and take appropriate doses. So here's the takeaway. I'm not convinced that the, the, the existing medical research warrants the excessive hand-wringing that we've witnessed in the media since the American Heart Association released their statement in 2020. The research does suggest that cannabis will likely not cause cardiovascular disease or a heart attack in a healthy person, uh, and patients with existing cardiovascular disease should always discuss cannabis use with their healthcare professionals.
So I want to remind everyone that uh, Radical Health has an array of curriculum options and a range of price points for students and working professionals. Whether you're helping customers make good product choices, whether you're treating patients, whether you're maybe advocating for social change, or if you're just using cannabis yourself, you need evidence-based factual information about cannabis. Radical Health curriculum is up to date, it's comprehensive, and it's informed by both clinical expertise and by instructional design expertise. So I wanna thank you for your time today and for indulging me this afternoon. Please visit me in the Radical Health virtual booth uh, if you have questions or comments or go to our website or YouTube channel for more information about our curriculum packages.